Hi, this is Kathleen Dollar from the .NET Core team at Microsoft, and I'm here today with Rich Lander to talk about some tips for moving to .NET Core. How are you doing today? Great. Um, so the way I kind of think about this talk is, I often meet with these big customers who come to, to campus and ask us for guidance, and I'm like pushing .NET Core, and they're like, Rich, don't lie to me. You know, tell, tell me the truth. Tell me how it really is. Yeah. So this, this is supposed to be the how it really is talk for moving to .NET Core, right? We're certainly, we're certainly aiming that direction. And we're, so we're going to be going into uh, a few places you might not really expect us to go, including spending some time on making that decision about whether to go to .NET Core and when to do it. So uh, let's start and, out. And no lying. We're not going <laughs> to lie to you. We're going to try really hard not to lie to you, OK? Definitely. So uh, we're going to start out, like I said, with should you do it in the first place? Should you port to .NET Core? Uh, how are you going to prepare for it? And then some uh, tips about porting it. But that's actually not the biggest part of the talk. The biggest part is the setting up, uh, which I think is going to be the experience you have as well. Kind of like how to make the plan. How to make the plan, how to, carry, how to detail that down to being yeah. able to carry it out. So before we do that, I think we should start with why do it in the first place? What's good about .NET Core? Because then we're going to talk about some pain points. And I don't want to do that without first saying, why bother? And so these are some of the benefits for .NET Core. Um, we think for a lot of people, the side-by-side -side uh, installation, which is that's installation of the runtime, that also can be one of the pain points, and, but it's a benefit in that you can have two applications on the same, uh, in the same space, two applications on the same VM or the same machine, and they're each running their own copy of the runtime. And, which don't, and don't interfere with one at another. All. Not at all. All right, it's also faster. Uh, it's cross-platform and open source, and uh, it will be getting new features while .NET Framework uh, is now Stabilized. Yeah, it's faster though. It, one thing we actually forgot to say, it's faster and uses less memory. It does, and that's super important because when you actually measure just one little piece of code, you can see the speed of that. But what's much, much harder to get a handle on is how the allocations going on in the background are increasing your load for GC, and then you wind up with GC uh, pressure and kicking in a GC. Sure. So allocations are super important for a couple of reasons. That's the main But one. yeah, the, the simplest thing is if you have a hosted environment with mm -hmm. servers, you can pack more apps onto the same right, machine. Right, right. All okay. right, let's go. All right. So uh, you can find out more about the .NET Core 3 features uh, at this blog post, great, which great, Rich did. Great blog so post. So since Rich wrote it, he's pretty excited about that. So should you move? Big question. All right. We're going to look at a couple of considerations, um, and we're just going to walk through each of these. Yeah, and uh, just one tiny bit is, you know, I've been on, um, to, you know, talking to customers on campus, but also I've been to customer sites, uh, I think mostly in the United States, but maybe in other countries too. Uh, definitely in other countries. Um, and, uh, you know, this question is very real. Yep. Um, because, you know, different companies work different ways, but a lot of times you have like a higher level manager who's resistant to change and they're like, you know, show me why we should re why we should really do this, and is the risk that is it low? Yeah. So uh, this is some of the things you can do to establish uh, specifics about what it's going to take and where you're going to get get value from it. We definitely encourage you to go if you can find the value, and that's why the benefit slide is super important. And I hope that uh, when you come back and consider this, you'll you will explore the great things about uh, .NET Core, but not in isolation. Uh, we want to look at those alongside the, um, the, the cost. So before we go can, there. Can I just say one more thing? Yeah, which is yeah, yeah. Back to these <laughs> managers that are resistant that you kind of have yeah. to prove this to. I was at this one customer, uh, let's say, I think it was in last spring, um, and we did this project with them, and the, the management was, was kind of resistant. And then we did this prototype. We spent like a day upgrading their app. We were actually able to give them real numbers. They were like, whoa. This actually looks pretty good. And this was Were they back real? In, was it, it performance numbers? Yeah, it was performance okay. numbers. This is back in like preview three. Yeah, and now it's of better. Of .NET Core. Yeah, well, now we ship too. Yeah, so. it's, it's great. OK, so uh, before we get into some of those specifics, we, I do want to look at some other concerns that are kind of things that aren't the right reasons to make a decision. So let's take a quick look at these. And so the first thing is, yeah, if you're worried about .NET Framework not being supported, 
uh, that's, that's not in and of itself a good reason to move. So it will be supported for a very long time. Yeah, and I agree. I understand that in response to that, you might say, hey, but there was this thing, whichever thing <laughs> it is, that, you, that comes to mind. And .NET framework is actually really different than anything that's been out there before that's gone, undergone a similar change. And the first reason is that it's a Windows component. And so it, it's a critical, it's part of Windows. Yeah. Windows, can't, Windows needs it. It's literally on mm. the Windows DVD if we still have those, the DVDs. For those of you that remember what a DVD is. Yeah. So uh, th then also it's used heavily within Microsoft. And it's, in fact, Visual Studio. <laughs> yes, that's an example. <laughs> Visual Studio is a .NET framework application right now. So, uh, and then the biggest reason I think is that we, this is not something, this change to .NET Core and .NET Framework splitting a bit here. It's not only to free us up to do great things in the future with .NET Core. It is definitely to do that, but it's also to say there are, oh, we don't even have a good estimate of how many apps there are out in the wild. Millions. And it, those, that's, those, that's working. It's working and it's getting things done for people. And so stabilizing that aspect of our ecosystem is important to us and important to being able to set up for the future with this base of existing apps being solid where they are. So I think it's super important to think about, there's great reasons to go to .NET Core. Being afraid that we're gonna pull the plug on .NET Framework. Isn't one of them. It's not one of them. Yeah. A couple other things. You need NT services. Cool. We can do that. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, and then licensing. So if you're concerned about our license, we are MIT. And uh, we think that that is a good license for business. And if you want to hear more about that, let us know. Well, and we'll get Rich to write, write a blog post. Uh, yeah. I'll just say one tiny thing about that. And this is where I've talked to several customers, some of them very, very large. So our source is MIT, which is the part that's friendly to business. But um, a lot of customers want to hear from us that they're still installing Microsoft-provided software. And when you actually go download .NET Core from the website, that's actually like a Microsoft build, um, and it's a, you, if you want to think of it as a Microsoft proprietary product, feel free. It is built from open source, but it's you know, supported by Microsoft, and it is a Microsoft product. So there's nothing scary there at all. So if you want to use the word open source, you can. Some people really love that, and it's true. If you want to use the word like you know, Microsoft certified and supported, you can use that word too, and it's also true. It's both true, right. It's both true. It's, we sign it, we also provide the yeah. source code for people like Red Hat to build it separately. Yeah. So we are, we, we've worked really hard to be on both sides of this We're fence. kind of doing all the things. We think it's great to be both at once, and we think we're hitting that. So uh, Microsoft is still, uh, you know, we're still, Nobody's going to do anything crazy. We're still a there. commercial we software company. We are watching company. it very closely. Yeah. We approve every commit. We're watching it very closely. It's very safe. At the same time, we do take commits from the community. We're thrilled to do that. And uh, I think it's worked out really well. OK, so let's get into those specific questions. And the first one is, is your ac application in active development? Because if you only open your application occasionally, and it's to do very small things, like change what the current year is, you're just not going to gain a lot. The new features. Or, or, well, there's the other side of it is, maybe it's an enormous app that has a very slow rate of change. That's probably the one that you most want to think about is if you only have this one developer left who's working on this mega program, mega app, then um, you would that may not be the best thing to um, to move to .NET Core. It has right. to be under active development, and you kind of want to have it some well, kind of team. And I want to kind of clarify that. It's because the active moving will put it under active development. Yes. And so if that's sensible, hey, then that's great. That's actually a perfect way to put it. Yeah, it's, it's going to force it. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about thinking about that. Um, the frameworks, we have some stuff that's not going to be there. Most things are there. Uh, WinForms and WPF there now in 3.0. And then there's uh, the Windows compatibility pack will bring some more things in. So there's a number of things that are actually there, but there's some important ones that aren't going to be there. Um, a I think a couple of things of app domains are there, aren't they? Or is that completely? N no, so the app domain type is there, and some of the basic functionality, like for example, getting the list of assemblies is there, but the fundamental concept of app domains is definitely not there. 
Right, so it, did, it doesn't make sense to do things in a particular way on .NET Core for some of these things, and so they're just not there. Um, so uh, that's, if, if, you're in, if you're web forms, you're looking at a pretty deep reconsideration right. of your application. Can, can I say one more thing about the last slide? You can always say one more thing, Rich. <laughs> um, so one of the things we've been doing over the last years, last few years, is um, we're, it's like, okay, we're going to bring more functionality into .NET Core that you used in .NET Framework and kind of our, and we definitely did that in .NET Core 3.0. We brought Windows Forms and WPF and those were obviously very big projects. Um, that is the, the end of that journey, uh, the journey of bringing more .NET Framework functionality into .NET Core. So we feel like we did a great job. We took a ton of customer feedback. Um, we added, like if you look at between .NET Core 1.0 and .NET Core 2.1, we added 40,000 APIs, um, and that's not even including what we did with Windows Forms and WPF. So we feel really good about what we did, um, but th this is the end of that particular phase. So there are these, all these things on the right-hand side. Those are not the next candidates we're gonna bring back. Those, those are gonna remain on, on that list on the right. And now we're going to go do other things, but not, not more .NET Framework functionality. Right, so waiting to see if web forms or WCF. Exactly. Sorry. Not, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just not in the cards. So, and there's some good reasons for these. None of this was arbitrary. Uh, it was all, we took a, a, a very deep look at all of these things and how it would impact .NET Core and where we felt that it was, was not going to come forward with enough compatibility without being inconsistent with .NET Core, it went on this list. So it's, yeah. All right, so next thing is to talk about support policy. Doesn't that sound exciting? <laughs> yeah, I remember when I first, before you worked <coughs> here, I was telling you about the support policy. Do you remember that at yeah, that yeah, uh, yeah. MVP summit? Yeah, and I was you like. And I was talking to you and Julie. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the support policy, uh, is different for .NET Framework and .NET Core. So I'm going to talk here for a minute about the .NET Core uh, support policy. And in, we, a year ago, in December, not quite a year ago, we released 2.2, uh, .2, and then 3.0 we released, like right now. We yeah. just released yeah, it. Yesterday. That's where we are. So let's look at the schedule going forward, because we've announced the schedule, yes, and we think that's a awesome. great idea, so you know uh, what it's going to be. So first of all, in November, we're going to have 3.1, we're calling that LTS, which is long-term support, and I'll explain what that means. Coming up after that, we're going to have a major release every year, and every other year it's going to be LTS. So this LTS thing is, is pretty important. So you can think of it like a second train, and along that second train track, we have LTS versions. And one of the reasons that this visualization is kind of important is that it's hard to jump across the track in between. So for example, if you're on uh, .NET uh, 5.0 and you want to get back to 3.1 because you want to jump across halfway through, you have to go back to 3.1, which may not be an easy thing to do. So your best bet is to pick one of these tracks and then be able to commit to it. That's the best way to go about it. So let's talk about the specific support policy and here's a link to it. Uh, it's, y you can go read it, and everything here is a visualization of that. This is, it's true, this is my picture. So first of all, what does LTS look like? The current LTS today is 2.1, and we have announced a special date for it, which is August 21st of 20, uh, it was released 2018, so it will go out of support uh, August 21st, I think that may be 23rd, there. I may have a typo on this slide, of 2021. Well, wow, that's a minimum. It, yeah, it depends on when. Yes. Yeah, it depends on when we ship 3.1. But I guess, um, I guess that will be the date actually. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes it There's will. a special date for that one because it was we were settling on the final policy right then. It had been discussed for a while before that. But that's when we committed to the policy. So there's kind of a special date on that one. All of these are minimums. We could extend support further. Uh, it hasn't been our pattern. So I certainly don't think you want to count on any of these extending beyond these dates. It might happen. But. So 
Mm -hmm. It's three years from the date of release. It's actually three years from the date of the release, unless we run late on the next release, and then we expect to go a year past that. But the easiest way to think about it right. is three years. Yep, That's the right. easiest way to think about it. So what's the current then? That's what LTS does. Current track is 2.2, will go out of support on December 23rd of this year. .NET Core 3.0, which is releasing today, will go out three months after 3.1 ships. Go out of support. Go out of support. Sorry. Yes, go out of support. At three months after 3.1 uh, ships. We don't know exactly what the pattern will be around 5.0, and the reason is that we don't really anticipate point releases at this point in the 3.1 time frame. We don't really expect. Meaning we're of 3.2. At 3.2, exactly. We don't, we, don't, we don't have any plans on that. There's no plans for 3.2 or 3.3. We don't know what our plans will be for 5.0. So we could see a 5.1 or a 5.2. Um, we just don't know yet. So uh, that's what we can look forward to. So you can see that the support is significantly smaller. And this is not to scale. Uh, the stuff on the left is uh, a bit more spread out than the stuff on the right. Yeah, so the, the thing I'd like to add on this is if, if we look at, say, 3.0 to 3.1 in particular, mm -hmm. The, the level of kind of um, migration cost between those should be extremely it's low. I uh, absolutely. Um, so, you know, in terms, of, like, the thing that I would be doing if I was um, trying to interpret this, the, I, like if I had a team building an application, I would just always stay on tip. I would just yep. stay on the latest version, um, and then my team would get all the benefit of all the latest features, and I know that the Microsoft tr team is trying to make those as compatible as possible. And, you know, probably my server costs are going to be lower than someone else's who doesn't stay on tip. Yeah, this is absolutely true because it, not only are you going to be getting the new features, so nullability, is, you would get that if you are on 3.0 right now. If you're in the LTS 2.1, you don't get nullability. You don't get async streams. All the great stuff you're hearing about, you don't get F sharp 4.7. All the great stuff that, you're, that, that we're doing, you don't get that. Or the, all the new um, Docker limits support that we that's added right. um, in 3.0, or like the much smaller SDK that's in 3.0. Right. Uh, performance. Yeah, so we, performance. We, there's a lot of reasons to stay on the tip. However, we feel like it's important for it to be your choice, Absolutely. not our choice. So this is why we offer this alternative um, commitment that occasionally, once every couple of years, we'll mark one and say, we'll support it longer. So if switching versions r is a problem for an individual project, this isn't a, a company-wide decision, it's per project. If that's the right thing to do, go for it. Right. We are running a little bit behind, so we're okay. going to have to kick Speed it up, up a bit. I just want to say that uh, one more thing real quick is the .NET Framework. <laughs> the arrow <laughs> just goes right across. It just goes. It keeps going. Okay. So uh, let's, we're gonna, we are going to kick it up because I realize that we're running a bit short on time. Rich is talking too much. You, yeah, we are. We're, uh, I'm talking too much, too. So uh, one of the things is that you're going to be managing your own security updates for uh, .NET Core, and in .NET Framework, the security updates were part of Windows updates. We're not going to go deep into this. Um, the reason it's sometimes on you deploying is that you had to make sure there was the right .NET Framework on that machine that you were deploying out to, uh, but you always have to do that. Make sure it's there, and it won't be there from Windows. Windows Update. From Windows Update. Windows, it, it, it's just not part of Windows, um, and there's good reasons for that, so that we can change it and we can move forward. Third-party dependencies. Ask, how do we ask today? We go to a search engine. Go yeah, for it. Simple as Third that. parties mostly have a statement. Now let's prepare. So preparing to .NET Core is going to have a couple of steps. We'll walk through these again. The first one, though, you just want to move to a recent version. If you're back on 4.5 or even before, oh my gosh, any problems you have moving forward, settle that first. Right, because there were, there were a few points in the .NET Framework journey where we made significant changes, breaking changes, um, and you need to kind of make sure you've gotten through all of those, those waves of changes because like 4.72 and later are the most similar to .NET Core, so that's really why it's so valuable to validate that, you, that your app runs successfully on 4.72 or 4.8. Yep. And then uh, 
You want to know how you're going to validate success. What does that look like? Test coverage is one great number here. But so performance metrics is going to be important too. We expect it to get better, but checking that's always a good idea. Yeah, so back to those stories that I told earlier. So those, those developers that I talked to, they had performance tests, which they ran on the old stuff and the new stuff. And then they, I were, you know, then they just did basic arithmetic to figure out which one was faster. But uh, if you don't have those things, then you're kind of just a uh, finger in the wind type yeah, of setup, which is not really science. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be there. So evaluating uh, architectural changes. There's a couple things here. We're going to bounce through this because I think the slide to come back to it, this is deep consideration on your part. We're throwing this out there. And then you can come back to the slide and say, yeah, I want to spend more time on that topic. So uh, first of all, if you have a library that can target .NET Standard 2.0, you absolutely want to do that. That's what's supported on .NET Framework. You want to limit architecture framework changes during the port because if you say, oh, I'm going to change a bunch of stuff and port at the same time, you've really made your, pro your the whole effort is going to be uh, crazy. It's going to be well, hard. And, and then it, it won't be obvious to everyone why this? Why the build is breaking? Is it because of my migration, or is it because I actually made yeah. some bad plans, or it just can be a mess? But before you move, you might want to look at a couple of things, and one of which is the isolation of concerns. So if you're using WCF in only one, you know, for one task, but it's spread all over your application, start by taking all that into one library so that you can replace WCF in just one place. That's what we mean by isolation of concerns. And then uh, there's something called the .NET Portability Analyzer. And uh, we're, I'm going to walk through this just real qu quickly. It's a Visual Studio download you can get at that link. It's, a, uh, it's an extension to Visual Studio. And after you run it, you get a spreadsheet. And I'm going to start with the portability summary. And I did two. These are both just standard .NET Framework applications for WinForms and web, this is a, a web MVC. And let's look at the difference. Right here, this number 34%, that says we're in trouble. ASP.NET MVC, you don't just do a straight port on it. It's different work. We'll talk about that in a second. But you can see that number. If you look at, get it back here. If you look at WinForms, you see 77. Point 77%, which is still a little bit low, but you can immediately go and find out what you've got. And I think that I just don't have the right SDK here and that there's some the work that I can do that's going to move that over. The way that you define Windows Forms itself changes the way the project file uh, looks between uh, Framework and Core. And I think that's what causes this because... Well, yeah, you can see almost all that stuff so is supported. Windows. Actually, all of, yeah, all of that's supported. So this, this one was probably pretty close to 100%, actually. It, it, sh it would have been, except that we changed from a dependency to the SDK. And that's what caused oh, the problem. I see. So, so this isn't yeah, quite So I'm showing thing. you this because we want to, again, show you where you might trip a little bit. And when you see this, don't panic and think you, you're not going to be able to move WinForms. It's just that the way that we define it isn't, uh, this tool doesn't handle it really well. All right. So portability analyzer? Yes. All right, so we did a little demo of that. And uh, going back to porting your app, what do you actually want to do? Yeah, this is the active phase. And we are updating these apps today. D docs, docs. Docs, 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 docs. I'm sorry. We are updating the docs today. Right now, there's a PR. We don't know the state of the PR at the moment. Right, but within S the next 24 hours, it should be merged, and then the yeah. right content will be at that link. Right. Um, so you want to choose the project to port. We recommend that you look at the ones with least dependencies and test projects early on. And then you'll change project files and code differently. Test projects early, is that obvious? If you move early with them, it's going to be, uh, yeah. life will be better. Actually, so I don't think it is obvious. Oh, okay. I, I, so um, yeah, this helps, this helps shine the light yeah. on, on what the heck it is you're doing. So. I think this is great um, advice. All right. Uh, project files. Project files is going to be a big headache uh, for you. We'll just tell you that up front. It's going to be a little bit of a headache on this. So uh, right now, they actually showed something in the keynote that I just want to mention. In passing, uh, Olia showed a tool, and there wasn't much background given on that. And what I want to clarify is that's, an, that's a prototype that is, is really got 
it's going to work in some easy cases. And so uh, we're trying to understand how you perceive that process of, of moving your project file. So we have normal channels that you can give us feedback on that, which is the uh, upper right, give feedback in Visual Studio. Or if you'd rather go to GitHub repo, uh, .net .core would be a great .net GitHub .net slash core, dot core, slash core, slash slash core. core. sorry. All right, so you want to create a new project file and then allow globbing to bring in your actual files. .NET standard libraries are ready to go. WPF WinForms, console, class library, these should be pretty straightforward. ASP.NET is going to be a little bit harder. Uh, you're going to need to replace certain aspects of that in the IS integration yeah, pieces. Yeah. And we, we, you're not just going to want to try to make this a straight port. This is going to be taking the new ASP.NET Core, which is vastly improved. It's a fantastic piece of work. You're going to want to take that and then move your old code into yeah, it. I realize now that we've made the slide we, slightly we incorrect. Slide up. It shouldn't say plan to replace IS integration. ASP.NET Core also has IS integration. It's just that right. it's slightly right, different. Right, right. It's it's, it's so, Integration only in that where you are counting on these features, then they're going to be different. And yeah. we still, you're still going to use IIS. You're right. We had a, we had a poor, and we have one more slide, and then we're going to get to try to take some questions. We ran a little bit over here. Yeah. So web forms, we suggest that you look at Blazor, and the reason for that is that Blazor is an event model similar to the way web forms is an event model. And so if you go to Blazor, it's going to be easier for you to take your ideas forward. So should we move to questions? I think we should move I to think questions. We should too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we at that time? All right. Yeah. Okay, so moving to questions. So, Rich, I thought this one would uh, make you smile. Doesn't uh, look like a question to me. <laughs> <laughs> Rich Lander rocks, so looks like you have a fan. <laughs> wow, the first one. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, so let's look at real questions now. Um, okay, let's see. What's a good one? Is .NET standard going to move to v5 when we get .NET 5? I don't think we know. Uh, well, I think the, the first answer is that's unlikely because uh, we have a different numbering scheme for the two. So I, oh, do you I, mean the num Do you mean will there be a .NET standard? Do you mean what the number? What the, uh, the it just it's whatever be. the question was. I don't think it'll yeah, be v v5, and we haven't figured out our .NET standard plan going forward. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next one from Bill. So, in addition to the releases on their product plan, can we expect bug fixes and other updates on a fairly frequent um, basis? Yes. It's okay. basically monthly. Yes. Monthly, great. That's easy. I like that question. 